Hey, I had a keynote speech in uh, Riga Dev Days, I think two years ago, where I said that the world is going open source. I mean, the software world. I'll give you a practical example. I was working uh, with a Zolt cryptocurrency uh, source code, which is a Ruby project. And I started to, like active development, I think somewhere around uh, March this year. So it's, it's been about seven months or eight months. And during the course of this project, I wrote, I guess, like 30 or 40,000 lines, lines of code, but I created seven or eight libraries, Ruby libraries, which I placed as standalone uh, packages to Ruby Gems repository. So I found eight places where the code which I create for one specific project could be reused in other projects as well. I can give you a list of those things. Uh, for example, uh, the library for uh, file-based uh, mutex management or the Telegram posting library or uh, simple in-memory caching or uh, threads management for unit testing and so on and so on. So I saw eight times I saw a necessity to, to, uh, to share my code with other programmers with the open source world because I, I realized that this is something which belongs not specifically to Zold library, not specifically to one cryptocurrency project, but could be reused in other projects as well. And immediately after I saw that possibility, I moved it open source. I'm recommending you to do exactly the same. Every time you see the possibility, you see an opportunity to take a part of your code and place it uh, and make it open source library, do it. What are you gonna you know, gain with that? What's the, uh, what's the benefits? I'll, I can list you four things. First one, every time I move something open source, I have to make it higher quality. I cannot just place stuff you know, in open source and just uh, keep it the way it was before. Every time I extract my piece of code from Zolt cryptocurrency and I move it to a standalone, standalone open source uh, Ruby library, I have to pay extra attention to the quality. It's not just a group of classes anymore which can stay, you know, which, which could be of any quality. It has to be something which I will be not proud of, but I will be able to show, to demonstrate it to everybody else and invite uh, new programmers to contribute. Second, um, obviously you get free coders. People contribute and they do. In all these eight libraries, I got some amount of contribution for free from programmers from the market. Why they contribute, I don't know. They have different reasons, but they helped me. They helped me to improve those eight libraries and I got it for free. That's obviously a benefit. Number three, I got some recognition. I managed to announce those libraries um, in some you know, chat rooms for Ruby programmers. I tweeted about them. I even on my Telegram channel, I announced them. So people now know me as a Ruby open source developer. I wasn't that developer a year ago. I was just you know, studying Ruby, uh, experimenting with, with this language, but I was not known as a Ruby developer. Now I guess I, I am because I created something. I shared my code with the community and some of them started to use that code. So I am a Ruby developer now. Is it good for my resume? Is it good for my career? Is it good for my professional growth? Obviously. The same will be for you. So create a library, no matter how small it is, put it to GitHub, release it properly, package it properly, document it correctly, and you will be known as an author of something in the Ruby world. The final point is that what I got from these eight libraries is that I, uh, I have something which, you, which I can reuse in other projects. If all of that code would stay with Zolt cryptocurrency together in one large repository, it would be difficult for me when I would start a new project to reuse that stuff. I would need to extract it somehow from Zold. I would need to put it somewhere again. I would need to use copy-paste technique. That would be a difficult approach. That would be not an effective approach and I would lose time. So now I invested that time to move the code to open source in order to save my time in the future. And it did cost me time, of course. Every time I was 
uh, extracting the code and moving it to open source and making it a standalone library, I obviously invested extra amount of time for that operation. But that was an investment for the future, for the future of my projects and for the future of your projects. To tell you the truth, sometimes I'm shy to do that. I feel scared sometimes. I feel uh, uncomfortable sometimes to take my code and make it public and announce it publicly. Because, well, not because my code is of low quality. I'm more or less comfortable with the quality because I use static analyzers, I use unit testing. So I'm more or less uh, sure that that is not a complete garbage. But what I'm not sure about is that I'm not reinventing the wheel sometimes. So when I create a new library, I don't know whether something else would, was created already. And I will just announce it now. I will say, hey guys, invented something great. And then, then people will tell me, look, you just created what, what existed before. In order to avoid that, I always, or in most cases, start with an experiment. I create a, a GitHub repository with no code. I create a readme file. I explain what the library will do. And then I show it to someone preferably in some Telegram group or on Twitter. So I tweet and say, hey guys, I'm gonna create some new Ruby library or Java library, whatever, and uh, what do you think about it? Maybe I am doing something which already exists. And sometimes I'm getting a response of, you know what, look at that place, it, ex it existed before. And then I say, oh great, I'm gonna just use it, and I skip my, uh, my initiative, which is great as well, because that helps me to find something which already exists.